This is still the City Breakfast Show. Send in your comments on 0549-986-996. So this week is very, it's very interesting. The last few days, we've been talking about taxes and all of that. But one thing or one topic that has uh, been on the burner, sometimes loudly, sometimes quietly, is illegal mining. In the last, what? I can't remember for how long we've been doing this. We've gone on a campaign. We've had several news stories. We've done several reports. We've played some of those reports on the City Breakfast Show, just highlighting the devastation that Galamse is um, causing in several parts of the country. Now, at a point, you had Dr. Frimpon Boating um, as minister of that, that domain, you know, environment and all of that. And this week, <laughs> a report he authored and was meant for the president's consumption, as it turned out, may, found its way into the public space. <laughs> and so, the report kind of surfaced in the public space, and several people have been reacting. So, if you follow the news this morning... We played the voice of a former MP, Joseph Kwam, who was reacting. His name was mentioned in the report. We've had private legal practitioner, Gabi Osario Chidako, also, report, also responding to the report and, um, and all of that. Now, for those who have not seen the report, essentially the news stories mentioned that several members or several people close to the government, some MPP officials have been named in the report and they are said to be engaging in uh, some very untoward um, acts when it comes to illegal mining or galamse. And they are not too happy with the fact that they've been mentioned. They say they are not guilty. We'll give you some reactions though. But um, guys, I'm sure we have the report. If you go to page 11 of the report, that's where you find out or you get to see the challenges that Professor Frimpon Boating faced. So he, he put all these challenges and the various things he and his team witnessed or observed into the report that was meant for the president's um, consumption. So <laughs> if you go through the challenges, for example, he mentions the fact that one, most members of the inter interministerial committee abandoned the committee. So the committee was set up to fight Galamse. And like the name suggests, it was a mixture of different ministries because Galam said does not only affect the land or the environment, it affects other things, water, agriculture, a lot of other sectors. And so Dr. Frimpon and Boatin's report highlighted some of the challenges they face. So they talked about most members of the interministerial committee abandoning the committee. Um, Sky, looking for this on page 11. No, no, yeah. Yes. yes. Right. And then they mentioned mining in forest reserves. Mining in forest reserves. Now, the report states that in 2018, okay, a decision taken by the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources and its agencies to grant concessions in virtually all forest reserves to mining companies did a lot of harm. It's quite revealing there that the ministry would give or grant concessions in virtually all forest reserves. And the report is stating so. And it goes on to mention, now it is in that line that you find some names being mentioned there. And then you find unwholesome behavior of some MPP and government appointees. Now it is in this point three that the former MP for Manson Kwanta, Honorable Joseph Albert, Kwam's name was mentioned. So this is on page 12, at that point where um, the behavior of some government appointees and some MPs was highlighted. They alleged. So alleged. Yeah, yeah, alleged. Alleged. Yes, yes, uh, okay, alleged. Yeah. You know. So because the report is claiming. Of course, it's claiming. That, yes. So that's that, that's important. You get it. Um, so that's what the MP responded to. So we played the voice of the MP. He granted us an interview mm -hmm. on eyewitness news and he said no, it wasn't true. You know, all the things that uh, Professor Frimpom Boating had detailed. Also the report goes on to say that allegedly there was mining by party officials and government appointees. So, essentially saying that the war against Galamse allegedly suffered a lot of self-sabotage. Mm -hmm. Okay, the same government that said, let's fight Galamse. You had some elements in the government allegedly doing things to counter the overall government direction and cause a lot of failure 
in terms of the fight against illegal mining. So, like we've established, this report was meant for the president's consumption. And Sky, when, when exactly was this report put together? Well, um, if you look at the letter that was released by Professor Fripon Boateng himself, apparently uh, Kweku Bako Jr., um, who is um, uh, the editor-in-chief of the Crusading Guard newspaper, yes. um, had something to do with this particular matter, allegedly, according to the minister. And Kweku Bako has also put out a, a rejoinder on, on the subject matter. You would note that Professor Fripon Boateng issued a letter to him mm -hmm. on the 18th of April 2023. Okay. And in that letter, he details what would have been the date of the publication or release of the report yes. to the uh, chief of staff. And, and with your permission, let me just read that letter because it comes on the letterhead of Professor Frimpon Boateng. It's dated the 18th of April 2023 and is addressed to um, Mr. Kweku Baku. Uh, and it says, Dear uh, dear uh, Mr. Kwekubako, I acknowledge receipt of your WhatsApp message you sent to me at 10, 1.30 p.m. today, Tuesday, the 18th of April, 2023, okay. which had a link to excerpts of a publication by Mr. Echo Taylor on his program, Loud Silence, on Sunday, the 16th of April, 2023. I have not laid hands on all the documents exhibited on the program. However, I have seen the copy of a report I presented to the chief of staff at the presidency a little over a year ago I see. on her orders that contained the piece you sent to me. Now, the chief of staff wrote to me to present a report to the president on the work of the IMCIM, which is the Inter Interministerial Ministerial Committee on mm -hmm. Illegal Mining. Exactly. Which I chaired. <laughs> Furthermore, I was told to suggest a way forward in the fight against illegal mining. Now, I prepared the report, which I signed on the 19th of March 2021. So that answers your question. Oh, I see. And March 2021. Yeah, that's okay. right. And presented... To the chief of staff, now I am solely responsible for the report and I stand by every statement. I presented verifiable facts, not in windows, to the chief of staff. Um, your, your tax on me have been consistent and long-standing. It started in August 2020, 20, 2010 actually, when you suggested that I quit the MPP presidential primaries okay. for a strange reason. I'm also presenting some articles from your Crusading Guide newspaper. I wish you a good evening. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was Professor Frimpon Boating. Yeah, that's right. So that was Professor Frimpon Boating uh, suggesting that this report we are talking about was actually prepared uh, on the 19th, the 19th of uh, March 2021, and submitted to the chief of staff, uh, Frema Opari. And then, for some reason, we don't know how, uh, it leaked, got into the media space, and the details are what we are discussing. Yes. But the bottom line, or the suggestion in that report, if you look at the gamut of it, is the claim that the... Uh, the, the president had announced publicly that he was doing everything possible to confront, fight and defeat once and for all the illegal mining menace in this country. You remember that um, somewhere in 2016, 2015, mm -hmm. 2017, we had mounted a serious campaign yes. against Stop Gal, I'm seeing now, yes. yeah, illegal mining, which attracted a lot of support from civil society organizations, persons in these communities being affected, the Ghana Water Company Limited, and many institutions, uh, including the Ministry of, in uh, what do you call it, Environment itself. So when this thing gathered momentum and the good people of Ghana realized how serious a devastation the water bodies of this country were suffering, and of course the environment, and, and the, the, the long-term impact on food supply and all of that. Everybody was on board. So the government took 
steps to deal with it. Mm-hmm. One of the things they did was to suspend, you know, small scale mining, mining activities yeah. across the country. Of course, they faced a lot of opposition from small scale miners because they thought they had received the necessary permits to go into um, their concessions to mine lawfully. So the government took a lot of hit as a result of, 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 of the suspension. Of course, we had heard that some people were defying the ban that had been placed on, you know, small-scale mining and all of that. So the formation of this committee was to deal with Galamse. And you also remember how a young, very vibrant, you know, solid soldier was murdered somewhere in the central region because we were told that he was protecting a concession um, that had been granted to a company um, to, to explore uh, for, for, for minerals. So the committee was to deal with these problems so that there will be a coordinated government response yeah. to the problem. We saw the burning of tractors. We saw the seizure of these tractors. In some cases, some of these tractors we were told, not tractors, um, excavators, excavators um, had left the, 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 the possession of the state officials who were supposed to keep. In other words, they went missing. Um, some were told were sold on the open market. Um, some people just couldn't account for them. So for Professor Frimpon Boating, at some point, was the minister in charge of um, environment, science, and technology. So he chaired the, 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 the committee that was supposed to deal with this particular matter. And it would seem that after he had left office, he received instructions from the chief of staff um, to prepare and submit that report. So it is the report that he submitted to the presidency that is now in the public domain. And essentially, he is claiming, which are allegations is made in this report, that very powerful people, both high and low, within the MPP, at the national level, um, at the local level, have played various parts to frustrate the work of his committee. In other words, they had made concerted efforts to undermine his fight against illegal mining. In other words, they were working against the express intentions of the President of the Republic. And, and, and that, in sum, it's, it's, it's what the report is saying. And he made, he actually named specific yes, individuals yes. In, in the report. And the, the individuals have been, have been responding. Well, yes. Um, one, well, two individuals, at least, at least have spoken to us and have granted us the chance, or they have stated the end of the story. One is Professor Albert Joseph Kwam. He's a former MP for Mansung Kwanta in the Ashanti region. He's denied claims of his involvement in illegal mining activities known as um, Galamsey. And like we stated, his name was mentioned in the report, and the report is alleging that this said former MP was involved in illegal mining. He told us yesterday on Eyewitness News that no, 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 that was not the case. My brother, this is most unfortunate. In the first place, let me greet your able listeners. My brother, it's most unfortunate, and this is totally lies. First and foremost, in the first place, do I own a concession? That is the very first thing. Let alone 12 or 24 or multiples of that of concession. I do not own a concession. Secondly, once I don't have a concession, how can I sell a concession to someone? And indeed, he who alleges must prove. If Professor from Watson is saying this, per your statement, he, he has asserted or he has accepted that the report is from him, right? We have tried to speak to him directly. We've called him. He's not responded to our request. But based on all what we've put together, considering that the chief of staff had asked him to send a report, which report's dates has already been publicized, which report is not out, which report came out two years ago, uh, we believe that this is, this is accurate. Well, to me, once he has not uh, as, uh, accepted on your decision, that the report is from him. I can't say much. But if indeed he has accepted that the report is from his outfit, 
Then for a mining concession, you must have documents covering it, bearing my name, Joseph Abed Kwam. I would rather advise that your station should request from him to produce all the documents bearing my name for mining purposes. All right. We will do so when we get him. But you say you don't have a concession. But did you ever own a concession? No, I don't. I don't even have one. So if we go to Minerals Commission or whichever I institution... You can go to Minerals Commission and do that thing. You, you do not even own any in someone else's I name. I don't even have a pin, a penny of a concession. Just a pin of a concession, let alone several, 12, multiples of 12 and others. No. And and he says you sold them for 200,000 cities. So that, that, even... that is why I'm saying that once I own one, then of course the second assessment, that, the second statement that he's saying would hold. But I don't have a confession. But he lo he talks he does a politics side of the debate and says it is the reason that the MPP lost that seat. Uh, My brother, Manson, MPP he said never he, lost that seat. Okay, what happened? You, you lost you MPP lost the primary. You, you, he said you lost the primaries, even though MPP never lost that. Seat. No problem, not MPP. You lost but, that but, seat but, through but, the but primaries. Let me tell you this. Yeah. Let me tell you this. MPP had a challenge with all the mining communities, including mine. So we, the MP of that place, were the face of the government, MPP. That is why we were most affected. Not me alone. You can check from Barbara or King Jesse. You can check from my end. You can check from most of the mining, what do you call it, communities. So you consider MPP, yourself... You consider yourself a matter of the fight against Galamsey that you died for the party's ultimate fight against Galamsey and not that... Exactly. And everybody knows that my position was fighting against illegal mining. But again, my other position was fighting to make sure that we get more concession for the illegal miners so that they can get a place to do proper mining. Okay, so your your defeat or your loss to the candidate who he described as relatively or lesser known individual who did not have any financial muscle should not be blamed on the anger of the constituents because of your not behavior. Not at all. Not at all. That is why even after my loss, I did massive campaign for my government, my for my party. How are you proceeding with this? If you are not, if you are, it's not confirmed that it's from him, you let it rest. If it's confirmed that it's from Professor from Bombo, what will be your decision? If it's confirmed that it's from him, I will let my lawyers write me to retract and apologize. Other than that, I will advise myself. So that was Professor Albert Joseph Kwam. He's a former MP for Mansung Kwanta in the Ashanti region. And he was uh, cited in Professor Frimpong uh, report that he was allegedly engaging in illegal mining. One other person who was mentioned um, in the said report, Charles Bissu, he has expressed disappointment at the timing of the release of the report. Now, he argues that the revelations would have served the nation better in 2019, following the report by Anas Haremi Anas's Tiger IPI on illegal mining activities in Ghana. First of all, um, I know that you've granted me a few interviews and other radio stations and all media houses have also done the same. And if you Google my name with this girl I'm saving, you'd realize that I've always been consistent in the things that I've said. And two, I've always said that vindication dwells within the womb of time. So everything that I'm saying, I say it in the interest of this country, Ghana, um, even though I have been vilified and sometimes I've always said that, when um, nations or other uh, things have to go well, people, some people must be sacrificed, uh, which I do not regret at all. But then I believe that in the end, um, the country must benefit uh, from whatever we're doing. Now, I'm not surprised to see um, these things coming 
um, out of, um, from Foster from Bombwatton. But um, I am disappointed in him for, first of all, not coming out in those years, you know what I mean, um, to actually churn out uh, such information. Because if he had done that previously, he would have actually dealt with the Galamsey menace uh, bedeviling the country. Because, um, you know, the, I've always said that this Galamsey issue has no political colors. Um, it is all over. Even you, some of your journalists are part of it. Al- see, al- allegedly. Um, okay, allegedly. Oh, thanks, for, thanks for correcting me. You see, in this, the report, I've also read it. You know, he said in December 2018, uh, I think I led a team to invade CNG, Alaska, and um, Aplampama Forest. And then in 2017, that was when I was hit by the sun, I think. And I remember when that thing came, uh, Kukubaku came out and warned the president to be careful. Everything that Prof is saying, some of them I'm not privy to. Regarding his conversation with Gabi, I wasn't privy to it. Um, but the conversation with Kwekubaku, yes, Prof told me. And he told me that uh, Kwekubaku uh, called him and said that, he said that when they go to cabinet, he's uh, been hitting CNG Aleska and um, Imperial um, Heritage, which was a concession that um, were actually what um, destroying our forest reserves. So in that vein, in December, I think Prof, um, whilst I was working as the secretary, um, the committee agreed that I go with about 30 journalists. That is um, the, the, the journalists that we send there to actually cover all the 47, uh, some of the 47 forest reserves never published the report. Then the last um, what expose came out. Now, I remember, I mean, I, there are lots of things that I know, but when you're building a country, there's, no, there's times and seasons that you talk. I remember in, um, I think in February, I was in um, South Africa in 2019, uh, February. And then when I came back, that's when the announced exposition came out. Somebody, a, a friend, um, came to me in South Africa and said that, don't know the interview, because I've had an altercation with him before, um, that um, I'm actually um, um, not, I, I'm doing a lot of things against their company and that they're going to deal with me. Two weeks later, we had that and as expose come out. Now, the thing that Prof has said in there, like I said, I'm not privy to the conversations that he's had with him, but so I cannot attest to that. But, for example, the conversation with Kwekubaku, yes, he told me the day that he was supposed to meet him at 4 p.m., yes, I was privy to that. And then further to that, Prof, I think, had an argument with um, the two gentlemen, one called Simon and then one Donald <coughs> and Chia. Yes, I'm from Prama Forest. Yes, I went there. When I went there, I think they didn't have a mining license. They've been given an entry permit, and they were supposed to be doing what? Um, um, the, that's levels of licenses. They were supposed to be doing, um, ex- I've forgotten that word, where you actually exploration or something like that. And then um, later, further to that, you're given a mining license. So because they couldn't show any documentation, then we stopped them from mining. Excavators were seized thereafter. But um, the point where Prof really hasn't come out. And at this point in time where he's been sent to the CID uh, to be investigated and now that, I mean, this information is coming out, uh, that is what actually uh, makes me, uh, I mean, um, I, I am so disappointed in Prof because as an elderly statesman, he should have actually spoken at the time that these things were happening, that the A, B, C, D was happening so that uh, we can have a discussion about it and deal with it. Okay, now, how should we take this report Um is it something that should mean anything to the fight? The fight appears to have been lost uh, using various yardsticks of measurement. But looking at what he has said, and for him to have said at the end there that he is the last man standing, and for you to say you are disappointed in him, that means you know That's something that we don't he's know. Not, Prof is not the land, last man standing. No, seriously. He, he's not the last man. He and I know a lot. You see, um, tomorrow, everything that I say, yeah, with the help of God, I would always speak the truth. You understand? Because posterity judges all of us. You understand? So when I say things today, and then in the next month or so, it turns out to be lies. It's actually, I, I wasn't brought up like that. And so for us, around this age, the 40s and the 50s, we know that we have a future in this country. And so we have to protect it. As opposed to people who are elderly state persons, who are supposed to be, what bequeathing something better to us um, ended up not being truthful. You, you see, there are lots of things that Prof knows that I know. 
So I, I, I would have wished that he had spoken at the time because there are things that he had also done. It is not when you've been sent to the CID that you actually throw in things um, or try and throw in the Spanish to, to actually destroy the government. I am a party person. In my party's constitution, it says you have to protect and promote the image of the party. So if I've always been, circum- I mean, be cautious, I've been cautious about the discussions I have on radio. Every discussion of mine has to be to protect the party and the government. There's so many things that I know between NDC, MPP, and people who are doing these things, but it goes to the appropriate quarters. I am mm. saying that there were 10 ministers on that what, um, committee. So if Prof comes out to say that he's the last one, then that is not true. What about Dambuche, Cecilia Dapa, Haji Alima? They were all, they are people of integrity, right? So I don't think one person should come out and say he or she was the landman, uh, last person standing. But, but, but do, you agree that, do you agree that he was part of the men standing, though? Was he part of the last man standing, even if he's not the only man standing? I do not agree. I do not agree. You think your, your you former know, boss uh, had his hands yes, soiled yes, in this fight yes, himself? You see, um, Umari, you're, you're asking a question. Uh, please do not forget that I have a legal background. So there are not things that I would say that I would go to court and defend. You understand, you understand my point? So, so you're careful. I know, I know that you're using the funneling system to narrow me down. You will not get to me. But I'm saying that he was not the last one standing. Okay. He was fought with what? He, and, he, and he was not even part of the last man standing. He wasn't. If you were to list out of the 10 ministers, which ones you consider the cleanest or those with clean hands in this fight, who would these be? So you're going through the back door. There were 10 ministers on the committee. Everybody, well, every one of them had something to what? To contribute to. So I would not take some out and leave some out. You understand? Okay. It was a collective thing. Being the secretary, if I name seven and leave the three out, what am I doing to the three? You understand? But Prof has come out to speak. And I'm saying that what he's saying to the point that he was the last one standing wasn't true. And I speak in the spirit of protecting my country. Okay. So that was um, Charles Bissu. Charles Bissu uh, is a former secretary for uh, former secretary to the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Man. He was speaking to Umar Sand Amadu on Eyewitness News. Um, the third reaction we got was from Gabi Asarochi Daku, who is a private legal practitioner, and he is accusing Professor Kwabna from Prombuatin of twisting his Galamse report to make him look good. Now, Gabriel Chidako was accused by the Professor Frimpon Bwanti of interfering in the work of the committee. And he says, the aspects of the report that implicates him is false and it's a deliberate attempt to discredit him. For me, it's, 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 um, it's very unprofessional of a minister to personalize an issue such as that. Very professional to drop a nade on on a matter that was purely about a lawyer asking questions about his client. Heritage happens to be a client to one of the lawyers at Moonfair, Adam. Heritage have a prospecting license issued on 25th October 2018, okay, which was to expire October 2021. I believe what the minister is referring to happened after this. I think it was in 2019 or 2020. I can't recollect, but he, probably he has the date. They had a mining exploration operating permit issued 18 July 2019. They had a Forest Entry Permit, issued 12 November 2018, and also an EPA permit. My lawyer comes to me and says that his client, with all these permits and licenses, goes on site with equipment to do prospecting, and the soldiers have come to seize the equipment. Okay? Now, what do you do as a lawyer? The first thing I did was, I placed, I asked, but are they with your people? Said yes. So I spoke to the 
to the... So you called the soldiers first? Yes, okay. to ask what really was going on. Mm -hmm. And then they said that they were acting on the instructions of the minister. So I called the minister for clarification. Clarification is saying that I have a client who has all the documents or permits and licenses required to do prospecting, everything. And he goes on site and then soldiers come to basically stop, not just stop them from working, but seize all the equipment. So I asked the minister, but they have permits, so what really, I want to understand the issue. And then the minister fires back and says, they are not prospecting, they are mining. I said, but minister, the, the information I have is that they, they took the equipment on that side today. So I, I, I want to be educated. Are the equipment for prospecting different from those that you need to mine? He couldn't answer. And I asked the technical people, they said, no, they're the same equipment. I said, so, I mean, they, they're just going on site today. So how can you? So said, oh, well, they shouldn't have been given the, the, the permit to, to enter the forest. I said, well, I mean, I, I, are you challenging the permit as fake? He said, no, but it shouldn't have been issued. I said, yeah, but that's a different matter. But I, I just want to understand really what the, the issues are. Is it that, you know, so essentially, he gave me his side of the story, which is that he believes that what they were doing was mining, not prospecting, even though they had just gone on site. And that was the conversation that we had. So, so what happened after that? Did you then tell him to let the people continue with the work? What, what kind of intervention How, did I mean, you make? Who, who, my intervention was to understand why a company, a legitimate company, with all the licenses and permits required to do prospecting, was being stopped from doing their work. And that's what lawyers we do. Mm. But in, the, in this case, he, yeah. they were in a forest reserve, we, and we pair the, the rules around the illegal mining thing. People in the reserves, particular reserves, were supposed mm. to halt operations. No, no this, this wasn't, a, there was no issue about halting operations. It was an issue of being issued a forest entry permit. Mm -hmm. And they entered the mining concession after they were issued all the permits. So even if there was an issue, then it is an issue between the regulatory bodies. Okay? I, I mean I wasn't even if like it's not it's not my brief as it were. But it's because their job was being frustrated. And I had before me all the documents that they required to do legitimate mining and they were being frustrated. That is why I placed the call, to understand why that was happening to them. So that was a private legal practitioner, Gabi Asari Ochidak, also giving a reaction to um, the report put out, or the report that, that has found its way into the public uh, domain, authored by Professor Frimpong Boating. It was supposed to have been for government consumption, but somehow it's made its way into the public sphere. So you've had three people reacting to things that have been said in the report and they are being allegedly accused of taking part in illegal mining in one form or the other, either actively or directly or indirectly, as it turns out, per what the report is saying. 36-page report highlighting that. Guys, so so really that's the state of play now. Okay. Godfrey, that's, that's, that's the state of play. That's what we have. We are yet to hear from Professor Frimpong Boating you know, on the report and these names that have been mentioned. No, I, 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 think, I, don't, I think he, he settled that. Yeah, he settled that already. He, he, if you, the, what the, the, the statement or the letter to Kweku Baku, Baku yes. I read to you, he yes. said he was standing by everything, everything. that he had. So we should take it that that, that, that is yeah, his so stance. Un, unless there's a, a, a substantial shift in position, which mm. he hasn't communicated, okay. we cannot assume that 
you know, he's not standing by. But the fact, though, is that, you know, people he has mentioned are coming out to discredit the His content claims. of what what he sent to the presidency. Go for it. Oh, thank you. Um, let me take it this way. So, in January 2021, the president disbanded the, what was called the IMSIM, which okay. had been handling the so-called war against Galam Singh. Okay. January 2021. Yes. Okay. And then, I think the instruction went out from the chief of staff that posed the disbandment. I'm sure it would be, I don't know, uh, but I'm sure it would be proper procedure that a report is presented. So per his letter, the chief of staff asked him to produce a report on the work of the IMSIM and hand it over, which is what this is supposed to be, if indeed um, it does turn out to be, because we must also get confirmation from the office of the president where this was submitted, that this indeed is the document that was submitted. Even though Professor Fripombati has confirmed that this is his work that was sent. Now, as the person who chaired that committee, I'm sure there's a reason why the chief of staff of the president would ask him to be the one to author this report. So in March 2021, mm. March 19th, this was submitted. So that it would be two months okay. after. You know, um, Interesting reading. Um, it's been, we are in 2023. Yes. Right? Two years. Two years. It's been two years. Um, it will be interesting to hear the fallouts of this. It started, but I'll also be interested in hearing fallouts from where this was submitted as to what had been going on regarding this in total. Okay. You know, with regards to, was this, was there going to be further action on this? You know, that sort of thing. That, that would be interesting to know. And I'm mm. sure it will come up later. Okay. You know. So you would then, like to hear from the government on because then the uh, a common sense question would be: It's been two years since this was submitted for something that has been considered bar COVID and the economic crisis we are in the biggest problem this country faces. This radio station has spent millions. If Samens is sitting here, if he decides to, he quantifies the value of airtime. I don't know how much it cost him. <laughs> but I mean, it would be thousands or millions. <laughs> to do what? On Galam Singh. Because he has, mo the, no, he has moved vehicles. Millions, man. Millions, he has moved man. vehicles. Moved he has moved journalists. Man. He has moved human... <laughs> yeah. He's given airtime on radio and television. In fact, if I recall not too long ago, he was on the road himself in the eastern region yes. for That's two nights. So for two, two chopping. Yeah. Bruta, was he doing Charlie. Itam Bruta? Yeah. <laughs> we recently even this. did a, a live discussion on TV. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, and, and a lot of media, other media houses have done the same. So I'm just trying to let everybody understand what this is supposed to be. So this is the report of the person who ran the project that was supposed to help fix that problem mm -hmm. that has cost millions to the taxpayer and to private business entities because we spent taxpayer money as well. The army was deployed. The police was deployed. All kinds of institutions mm -hmm. were deployed. Mm -hmm. We spent 200 and something Ghana, thousand or millions, two million Ghana cities on drones. Yeah. We don't know where they are. All those things. Speedboats. Everything. We've spent a lot of money on Galamsey. That's what I'm saying that if you take away COVID and yeah. you take away yeah. the current economic crisis that we are in, I don't think there's been anything that has come up that the government has spent more money on than Galamsey. Now to the report itself. The banking crisis. Yes, okay. The okay. banking crisis. crisis. True, legitimate. So, yeah, that's legitimate true. concern. Because, because they spent, spent 21 billion. Yeah, 21 Ghana billion. Cities. Yes. This is ongoing. As is the banking crisis and its fallout as well. So thank you very much for that input. But it ranks pretty high. Yes. Okay. Because the impact of this it's in several spheres. We are feeling it in Ghana water. Who have been rationing water in several regions mm -hmm. for some time now. Whose cost of operations have gone up mm -hmm. for some time now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you read the report as it is now. And hopefully now that this is out and we have few responses, I am sure we are going to get a lot more official responses. Yeah, because from several other names. Names were mentioned in there. So I'm going to be very careful with what I say on this because I have a feeling this will end up in court for a lot of the persons involved. 
Well, it's, 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 the question is whether if a report is prepared on the basis of an No, because it's public order, now. And names will be mentioned. Someone can sue mentioned. the person who prepared the report personally for something he puts in an official report. Uh, that would be an interesting... You, you are the lawyer. Yeah, to, the, <laughs> no, to the extent that the person uh, decides to own, own, take ownership of the report like he has done with the Kwekubaku thing, it, you are opening yourself up for further questioning and it okay. can lead you to court. Yeah. That's not to say that you've been indicted, but I'm saying that because yeah, I, I the think... issue, f- if you like, from Kwekubaku or Chidaku and the rest is to is to establish the exact role they played and that can extend to using the courts to establish the truth. I, I think the farthest you can go, and, and I stand to be corrected here, is to set aside the report, the validity of the same, the claims made against you, but to sue the persons personally, that's to... Well, I, okay, I mean, that, to, that, to that, to that sue the person or liable... Uh, yes, okay, of course, yes, that's yes, what the prop yes, said. Yes, 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 that, okay, that because, be. because he believes that the the report, mm. per, as it looks now, mm. damages, uh, damages his, his reputation. reputation. Yes. And yes. if you claim that you are the sole author of the report, then you have questions to answer. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, got it's it. a bit tenuous. So I'm, I'm expecting certain kinds of responses from people. Mm. Who have been mentioned. Who have been mentioned. Yes. Okay. But for the general public who are consuming this now, a picture emerges, perhaps for them, casually, as to the difficulties involved in ending Galamsey. Mm. And why for three and a half years or no more than more, years, more. for five, about 20, five years, six about. years now, we are still having this conversation about Galamsey and it does not seem to be going away. In fact, you know, there are no success stories to report these days. You know, because you might you 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 report a success story, it looks like it's just it's fleeting, you know, and it gets overtaken by mm-hmm. events mm-hmm. of Galamsey. I am fascinated by the link he draws between Galamsey and campaign financing. <laughs> it's, it's something that we have spoken about. Yeah. It's something that we have all held suspicions about. I won't say he confirms it, but he puts it in his report. So we'll wait the separation of institutions and politics. It's in there. A difficulty we have spoken about as part of the being one of the main reasons why we struggle to deal with Galamsey. The issue of asset declaration and following the money. I have sat here and I've said that I don't think the follow the money business has been done well enough because there's just too much money involved in this Galamsey mm-hmm. for us to struggle to catch a big boy. And by that, I don't mean Aisha one. <laughs> or a big girl, for that matter. Who knows? All in all, this report paints a picture of how the war on Galamsey is a good example of how not to handle a crisis. <laughs> An example of how not to handle a oh, crisis, yes. you see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, so it's like an example. So if they're teaching people how not to handle the crisis, something to... pages that you read, which part of it tells you this is how you work things out? I see. In, uh, petty jealousies, suspicions, uh, influence peddling, all of this alleged, of course. But I'm saying the picture that this report creates is just how complex government work is and how we fail and struggle to solve our problems because we fight against each other. In the end, it's always about personal vested interest, isn't it? Mm. So, we will wait. I am very patient. (laughs) On our side, I think what we can do is now to ask the next leg of the question. If your body has done his part, those who have been named will do their part. No, but I think he also has questions to answer. I have not said he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, he I'm saying he's done his part. Those, I think those who have been able to do the job of asking him the questions, their lawyers will do so. Our, my le- next leg of it is, 
Nas government. What, what happened? What has been going on for the past two years? So, was this considered? Was this considered legitimate? Uh, is it, was it useful? Has anything happened with it? Was there a conversation around it? Those are things we would want to know. But personally, I'm just saying, very disappointed. I'm done. <laughs> so, so man. Well, I mean, look, you, you have... I didn't hear Kweku Bakon's rebuttal. You, you, you yeah, that's where we have the copy. We can okay, read that. I, I didn't hear that, but I, I would expect that Kweku Bakon will respond. Indeed, he's a journalist, and so if an issue comes uh, on his desk, he has every right to do further interrogation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's for you to refuse him an answer or not, but you can't take it away from him that he can't ask, ask questions. Yeah, yeah. Unless you have evidence that following after the questions, he did certain things that you can prove to put impediments on your way. I, I mean, Sky, you are the lawyer. Mm -hmm. In the case of uh, 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 Gabby, mm -hmm. his client comes to him. And there's a Canadian company, mind you, it's a Canadian okay. company, comes to him and says, look, we have prospecting license, but we have been stopped. And what has he done? And you see, Gabi has not refuted the account of from Pomboating. Yes. He is only saying that he has placed it in a different context to indicate that it's an, a, an, an act of influence peddling. But he says, no, I'm a lawyer. My client comes to me and I say, okay, please, you are in charge. What are the facts of the case? Now you have told me the fact of the case and then case is rested. Unless Frimpon Boateng has evidence to indicate that following after that, mm -hmm. Gabi Ochidako did A, B, C to put impediments on my way. But you see, the, the fact that you are the chairman doesn't mean that you cannot be questioned. In any case, under your supervision, in fact, with the same heritage, uh, let me go through something. They got their prospecting license uh, October 20, 2018. Okay. So this is months after when they were asked to, you know, they, they had the, the and the, the, somebody, a, a, a Canadian company in Ghana operating in the mines has been given a license to prospect. Of course, if, if after that you then be given your exploration permit and all those things, and they had a valid entry permit, um, which was also given, I think, um, uh, in November of the same year. Now, let me put all these so-called interventions aside. My question is, if you have a legitimate license, okay, and you are met with this unfortunate, uh, um, you know, brutal whatever from, from military people and, and tax force, let me go through the number of equipment that were seized that nobody has accounted for. Okay. 38 excavators. They have <laughs> Komachu machines. You know the Komachu machines? Yes, yeah, the mm -hmm. Komachu, yeah, one. And then they have the Santui bulldozers, mm -hmm. three. They have 12 pickups. They have four diesel en engines. They have two um, electric welding, welding machines. They had nine power generators, okay, they have 18 four-cylinder diesel engine, engines. They have 25 motorbikes. And then 36-cylinder diesel engines. They had a towing truck. And they had um, 20 electric welding machines. And then 30 oil well pumps. And then 200,000 liters of diesel these are some of the items that were, seized, that were seized that nobody has accounted for. And we shouldn't ask. Nobody has accounted for it. And the people who seized them, they are working for you. And Frimpong Boateng was the chairman of the committee. So when I said that, he also has questions to answer. This was yeah. actually what, what I was trying to drive at. So... Somebody has a license, prospecting license. So, but the thing is, 
if you have if you are prospecting, the equipment you use to prospect is the same, the same equipment you use in exploring, okay. in mining. So by citing an equipment, you are not able to determine Whether just they by are, the yes, do exploring so, or so all the pe people are doing is asking that what is going on. And he said that by asking, they are putting impediments on your way. So if the account of Gabi Ochidako and account of Frimpon Boateng is all he is referring to, then it's a bit curious. Mm. It's a bit curious. This that's my point. <laughs> On on so 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 that's that so okay so essentially you're saying that he also has questions to answer on this one he needs to be very clear yeah he has to be clear on on, on you have what to be clear because see once this report comes out there will be questions and questions that will resolve issues of now and in the future okay okay but essentially this report doesn't solve our problem because look at what is done. Suddenly, everybody is talking about the so-called uh, interferences, and that becomes the big uh, uh, issue. Okay. But so, of all the elements of your task, what's the conclusion? What happened? You started from somewhere, ended somewhere. What are the outcomes? I think those are the things that mm. I'm more interested. In. But 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 don't you feel that this? Like Godfrey is saying, it highlights our own worries and our own observations course, that we've made course, over the years. But we cannot sacrifice the truth in the process. We cannot sacrifice the truth in the process. It does. It highlights its truth. Influence peddling is a big issue. No two ways about that. But because it's an issue, so nobody should call you to ask questions. <laughs> okay. And that's all I'm saying. I mean, I wasn't there, but I'm just saying that if what you have said and what Gabi is mm -hmm. saying, what Kukubaku is saying, is all that it is, then you need to come back and let us know which aspect of their engagement with you amounts, amounts to, to the interference. interference. We wait, wait to see what... I mean, we are yet to hear officially from the government. Richard? Yeah. Um, Nathan, uh, first of all, let's understand the context of um, what we're dealing with here and what appears to be what the former minister sought to do and to achieve with yep. this report. Mm -hmm. um, mind you, at some point, his name came up yes. um, over a leaked tape over which a number <laughs> of things had <laughs> been, been said. said. Yes. And an influential person from within the MPP from the central region was said to have gone to his office and allegedly recorded him, a conversation between him. Mm -hmm. And it had to do with some equipment that had been seized and his own role in getting some of these things uh, released and, and, and all of that. But I don't want to go into those issues. Um, Samens asked a direct question regarding, for instance, Gabi's role in, in, in this particular matter. I think for purposes of, um, for the benefit of our listeners, I think it would be good to read exactly what the former minister said with specific reference to Mr. Ochiridako, who celebrated his birthday in, yesterday anyway. <laughs> now, <laughs> belated happy birthday. Yeah, belated happy birthday. That's right. So on page 16 of the report that is said to have come from the former minister, um, this, he says, We were ready to dislodge imperial heritage from Krobo or Kobro Forest okay. when Mr. Gabi Ochridako called to inform me that he was the lawyer for Heritage Imperial Limited, a company that was destroying the Kobru and the Apa Prima Forest Reserves. Okay. And in the process, had also polluted and diverted the course of the river often, as can be seen in the satellite images below. I informed the president about the behavior of Mr. Gabi Asari Ochridako and he promised to deal with it. Okay. So that's on page 16 of the report that the minister reportedly authored. 
if what we have is consistent with what he actually submitted uh, to the chief of staff. Now, so, as Samens asked, how did Gabby get involved in this matter? From his narrative, or narrative, his law firm, the Africa Legal Associates, a brief had been received by a lawyer down the ladder. Mm -hmm. And it came to his attention subsequently that the ministry or the committee handling the fight against Galamsey, the, they were frustrating the work of their clients. And that their clients had received all the permits necessary mm -hmm. to go and look for, which is what prospecting, prospecting for yes. gold, not to actually mine gold concessions. So there are two different things. You receive a license, which almost always is preliminary to go and test, mm -hmm. you know, to go and see if you, really, if you could yeah, yes, you find a mineral resource there. or yes. something there. Like that. So that's what they were doing. And so when he received the report, he called up the minister. And the call was to ascertain if indeed that was happening. And they had a conversation that did not travel for more than three and a half minutes or so. But as he later got to know, the minister had spoken to the president about what Gabi had done, which was to call him. Now, let's try and interpret what the minister must have been thinking when Gabi's call came to him. Uh, Gabi, as we all know, it's an influential member Mem yeah. of the Akufuado family, the, 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 the mother side, mm -hmm. which is from Chebi. And we all know how hard he also fought for, you know, Nana Dudanku Akufuado <laughs> to become president. Of course, people drop his name all over the place um, just so they can get things done. Sometimes he becomes aware of it and gets, you know, to, to, to reprimand people every now and then. But the fact, as we all know it, is that he's a lawyer. And when this matter came to him, according to he himself, he called the minister. He was not calling in his capacity as a friend or a relation of the president. He was calling as a lawyer. He was calling as the lead lawyer at Africa Legal Associates to inquire about what was happening. Mm -hmm. Now, is it possible that in that discussion, the minister sought to interpret such a call <laughs> as a call coming from a powerful member of the Akufuado uh, mother side family? Mm -hmm. And so if he interpreted that way, uh -huh. the most logical thing to do is... Is to suggest it. that the, 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 the Gabi was sort of intervening, which is, uh, which is a well, very well, dangerous well, thing. While that's a possibility, uh -huh. he states in his report uh -huh. that Gabi said he is the, the lawyer. Lord that, yes. Yeah. 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 I'll put it all nicely together. So when you interpret it that way, which is likely to be what detractors would do to say that, hey, this man, the president says he's fighting Galamse. So you would expect that all the people who believe in his cause, including members of his family and members of the government, will be all together on the fight. But what you would have is when detractors hear that a member of the family or a member of government... <laughs> or a member close to government is saying something as to suggest that he's sort of holding brief for some other person accused of doing something untoward, then they will run off with it. But let's look at it. Has Gabi always acted as a lawyer for these people? It would seem that on the facts, he's been doing some work. His, his law firm has been doing some work. For the, for, the, for, the, for the client in this particular matter. And that he called purely on the basis of what he had received. Now, is it wrong for a lawyer to call a state official to ask questions about what was happening? Some will say that, well, maybe he should have written a formal letter. But it is almost always the case in practice that sometimes... You don't straightforward go to a letter, an official letter, to raise issues. You can call and ask questions as to what exactly is happening. If there's a way of dealing with it. Uh -huh. I see. But 
what was exactly the reason why the minister suggests that there may have been a problem here? Yes, it would seem that the company received all the certification necessary yes. to do what they were do, yes. they were supposed to do. But the minister's allegation or the former, former minister's claim is that they were going beyond what, what the permit was allowing them exactly. to do. Exactly. And, and he has provided some aerial images, uh, whatever it is, to support that claim. Those are matters to be investigated. But is it fair for him to bring in Gabi into this particular matter? I, I think the minister went too far. Why? Why do you say so? Um, I believe that there are many other lawyers who would have contacted him at some point in time. Okay. About something happening to their clients. Mm -hmm. Right? But we don't see all of them lined up. But, but, but don't you think that, that but don't you think that by virtue of Gabi Otridakun's clout and weight... Uh -huh, you see, that was why I mentioned yes. it earlier. Uh -huh. That depending on how you interpret what the relationship is, you are likely to take the position that he is calling to pull a whip on me mm -hmm. and say, do A, B, C, D. Yes. In his own narration, he did not suggest that Gabi instructed him to do A, B, C. D. That's also quite clear. Do you understand? So, the suggestion is that he called to say he was acting as a lawyer for, you know, the company in, yes. in, in question. He did not say that Gabi called to instruct him. But what is also, you know, somewhat, some way for me, was when he said that he was going to tell the president, and my information is that he actually even informed the president that, yes, Gabi called me on A, B, C, and D. Now, some would say, on, on the principle of, um, so should I say good governance? They will say that, okay, if you know that a relation of yours is the president or a close friend of yours is the president and he's given a specific directive as to how something should be handled, maybe when a matter of that size comes to your attention, you should say, oh, no, you don't want to deal with it. Um, and so maybe because of the likelihood of conflict, of conflict of or interest. how people would yes. interpret it. But Oscar, yeah. just to hold your thoughts, mm. that is true, very true. Um, in taking that decision of I don't want to deal with it, mm -hmm. isn't it only fair to ask further clarifications regarding mm -hmm. the issue? That's true, that's true. In which case Gabi did. Exactly, that's true. And we still do not have any evidence of his involvement following after that conversation. Uh -huh. Exactly. That's, that's why I'm saying that it was unfair for the minister to, the ex-minister to do that because lawyers make inquiries all the time. It's just like you, a journalist. If somebody calls you right now and says that, oh, ABCD is happening at well, you GFA. Exactly. You place a few calls exactly. to, find, a few, out to find out what's happening. So if a lawyer receives a brief and acts on it that way, I think it is unfair. But I'm just mentioning the possibility that people who hear some of these things will quickly raise their antenna and say that, oh, hey, good governor, so if you are related to the president or you are a close friend of his, uh, maybe on, on this matter, it might sound some way to get involved. But as we all know, there was no express directive to the minister to do A, B, and C. He wasn't, you know, ordered to do A, B, and C, and therefore that does not find expression in this report. Mm. So I find it really, really some way that the minister expressly mentioned Gabby's name. Because mind you, there was also some time, uh, some time ago, the Honorable Freddie Blade, the national chairman of the <laughs> MPP, <laughs> yeah. was also thrown into this matter because his law firm was supposed was handling to Aisha Huan's case. Exactly. I remember I interviewed uh -huh. him on, on the and, morning and show. And people raise issues about why the national chairman of the governing party will be representing a person who is or was being prosecuted for engaging in illegal mining by a government formed by his party <laughs> and led by his presidential candidate. But, but you see, represented in court. In court, yes. That's one. Uh -huh. Now, you said somebody who was involved in a criminal activity. Alleged criminal activity. As established, as being questioned by the courts. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And this person had fled the country mm -hmm. under a very dubious <laughs> circumstance. Mm -hmm. And you are 
um, representing this person as a lawyer. So in your professional, indeed, his his chambers, if you call it chambers, right? But this particular one, my client comes to me and I say, okay, hold on, let me go and ask questions about the matter. And I just, all I did was to To ask ask the question. And that's not even to make a further step of going to represent you in court. court, I ask questions, Mm -hmm. I'm giving the responses and I end it there. So, so yeah, you see, I agree with you, Samens. I'm saying that you see, if you so, don't, so open clearly it's a matter of optics, yeah, really. it's how it looks exactly. So, so uh-huh. people, depending on where you sit, mm-hmm. you want to put a negative or positive spin on it. Very Except, easy, yeah, that's right. It is easy to do that, and the negative one is attractive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so optics. it would seem because if I was writing this report. Um, I really will struggle to see why I'll put Gabby's, if he did not do anything beyond asking questions about what exactly was happening. He didn't instruct me to do anything on toward, unless you are saying that by reason of his association with the president, he was stopped from acting for and on behalf of a client who has what would seem to be a legitimate issue to raise about the operations of the... And and then let me read something to you. Because it would seem that uh, Samez read um, or mentioned details of some of the equipment that this committee had seized. Um, My understanding is that... (laughs) There was a court action subsequently initiated on this particular issue. And in the process of um, the trial, the the, the court came to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was a full trial. And sometime in July 2020, the court entered judgment for the plaintiff. In this case, the the company that Gabby was supposed to be representing. Mm -hmm. And in effect, what they said that there was a declaration that the invasion of the plaintiff's mining site and the seizure of his excavators and equipment was unlawful. In other words, the equipment that we were told Mm -hmm. they had seized, that invasion of the mining, or not the mining, the site for exploration or prospect shame for gold that 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 act on the part of the committee the court found to be unlawful and then also there was an order for the recovery of the sum of 15 million 304,714 US dollars 20 cents being the value of the machinery and the equipment seized from the plaintiff's site by the Interministerial Tax Force on Illegal Mining on the 6th day of December 2018, or its current value in CDs. And then also there was an order for general damages of 500,000 Ghana CDs and cost of 100,000 Ghana CDs imposed on the state by reason of what the Interministerial Committee had done. But I must mention, so technically, this would be a judgment that imposed by the court because for some reason, the court found that the committee acted in excess of the authority that it had or breached the law to do what they did. But I must say that there has been a further development in this particular matter. Um, The attorney general went to court to challenge the orders of the court raising technical issues that the plaintiff, in this case, the company that Africa Legal Associates, they were, they were representing, they did not state the full amount of damages on the writ. And so uh, it was improper for some of the orders or the orders to be issued. So in a recent judgment, um, the court sort of set aside you know, the earlier order that 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 was made. So that is the development on this matter. But I, I think that we should try and compartmentalize the issues. If you believe in, say, rule you know, of law, it's, it's hard. It's, it's yeah, a very it's difficult. I, I, thing. Like it's, I said, it's, I, I, the optics I of it. Yeah. Exactly. You see, the it's very hard. Of it. And like I said, I chose my words very carefully on this matter again because of the legal repercussions. Mm-hmm, yes. You know, I it's not a matter where you can just go out and start. No, talking, no, no, boom, no, boom, no, 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 of course. You know, especially because, which is why I'm very interested in the second part. Mm-hmm. But overall, yeah, okay, you mentioned something which is key, which we've 
we've lacked off and complained about, which has caused a lot of these situations. Mm -hmm. Good governance. Yeah, good governance. Yeah. Practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of the things that happen in proper democracies, well-run places, mm -hmm. we overlook them here. That's true. So this back and forth that we are having over this, like you were saying, under normal circumstances, like you were saying, that interaction would not elicit suspicion anywhere. But, but, but here, it will elicit suspicion because of the constant overlap. Yeah. Is there a history of overlap? Yes! So when name A comes up, you, you, obviously, you, your, your antennas will go up and you now, start to think. Hold on. Mm. On the second point, on that particular case, because it was, I, I was a bit heavy on the gallum, same matter. I remember the day that incident happened and it will be interesting to hear what Asuma Treme says on this matter. Mm -hmm. Because he granted the license, his own signature. Mm -hmm. He was there that day with a media team, including our own. At the whatever, at the, the, forest, the forest, forest, at the yeah. forest reserve that day, mm -hmm. on that matter, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, when this happened. And with his team of experts, who I would assume know the difference between, between prospecting, prospecting and and hardcore mining. That, that is not in the realms of a law court. That is in the realms of mining a, a specialist. And I'm sure the Minerals Commission and the ministry that handles it has more than enough mm -hmm. to deduce between the two. Because that is how they'll designate between the, the licenses. They'll differentiate between the licenses. Exploration. And this. Prospection. He was on the land himself that day. Mm -hmm. In fact, I can read you his quotes. Mm -hmm. From what did he say? Tell her. The minister what? that day mm -hmm. when he went there. Okay. Let me see what he says. While you are looking for that, I think we, we should try and distinguish between whether a person acting as a lawyer. Uh -huh. I, think, I, think, I think that is easily established. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to say something uh -huh. here because if the company indeed engaged in galamse, properly so called. Yes well in excess of the authority the state granted them. Yeah. I think the people responsible have to be investigated, arrested, and prosecuted without any fear or favor, mm -hmm. let or hindrance. That must be stated clearly. That's true. You understand? But that is different from saying or suggesting, not in as many words, that a lawyer related to the president... Mm -hmm called to ask questions and therefore people conclude that it is because no, because you see the reason why i'm insisting on this is that people are hearing this and are saying all kinds of things but if honorable friend from watching wanted to state in express terms uh -huh. that gabby called to instruct him he would have said so unless Unless yeah. he decided not to maybe put it in the report in black and white. Oh, I mean, what did he not say about and the list? He said and everything. You see, so and Gabby has not said that he did not make the call. He said that yes, I made the call, but it was purely confined to a client, you know, attorney relationship Wait, and that, related matters. Wait, so that's why I asked you something mm -hmm. on. Gabby's persona, yes. his clout. Uh -huh. There's not uh -huh. something you can overlook. Uh -huh. see, so, is, uh -huh. so, so you see, that's another layer altogether. And that's why well, I went see, into the realm of the layer. You see, that you can that leave the in layer. the realms and say, oh, that we can't measure scientifically because mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. But mm -hmm. the point is, we know who this person is. Mm -hmm. So once he places a call to a minister and the minister sees the person calling him, mm -hmm. His mind will start running in all kinds of directions. Yes, I agree. You can, you, can, you can say, oh, conjecture, whatever, whatever. But the point is, and like Godfrey, the optics, how it looks will matter, especially in this fight. In, in, this in, in the Ghanaian context. Yes. You see, because I, can go, I can take you through the messages, mm -hmm. and it's not even just on this. You know, you know I, I think like we've overfocused a bit even on all this. All right, let's, let's, you know, let's Because there are, other, there are components, other components. But a lot of messages from Ghanaians indicate that, oh, we've always known these things. It's not... New, and it, it, it must be pretty sad. It's sad. For, no, it's not. It must be For the president, and if they are listening, <laughs> for some of the messages I will read, whose people say that, oh, hey. it's like, you're not telling... This report doesn't... We've always known and we've always told you. It's okay? just now it's, it's just Professor Pimpong Barton who's come, You know, and even now, he said it two years ago in an official report. This was not meant for public consumption. Some way, somehow... 
It's here. We will use it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll mine everything out of it. We will use it. But, you see, for me, we need to fix this system that we run. Where, one, people acquire wealth, we don't care. And I said, I, I particularly mentioned that link between politics and what has been going on. Because mm-hmm. for a very long time, you know, I remember I told you, and I said it, and you were not here then, but when we were doing the elections, yes, I told you that the war against Galam, see, and Sky, if you know your election numbers properly, mm-hmm. and your election analysis, the war against Galam, see, lost steam after the, district. after the district assembly elections. You can check. Because it was embarrassing for the governing You side. can check. As soon as they started realizing what had gone on, and I'm not, I'm, as soon as people looked at numbers <laughs> and the areas and how it, the, the kind of feedback that was coming in, mm-hmm. unless you are not being honest with yourself as a political watcher or an analyst, you could have easily told where the shift was. So we've had a lot of optics where we're saying we're doing this. But the nature of Galamse is said that sky is not like you are sneaking money from Ghana to the Cayman Islands and nobody can see the ordinary person. If the water is it's brown, it's brown. brown. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah that's what this is. If they are digging the forest, mm-hmm. they are digging the forest. Yeah. People fly over these things in aircrafts, in all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. People live in these communities, which is why I've always found it interesting, you see. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we are having conversations around, oh, so a name is mentioned, like the person says AEV. And then somebody from their community says, people don't know what you're talking about. Who knows these people better than their own communities? You understand? Mm-hmm. So you might go to a certain place. This person tells you, well, I'm not involved in Galamsey. But the community people will tell you, if you are looking for number one Galamsey person, it is this person. But you will find his name legally on any document because the thing is supposed to be illegal in the first place. Okay? So... I'm saying, when I take the report, all 36 or so pages of it, and you put it together. Everything is in a mess. It, it simply shows us how we've undermined ourselves by virtue of greed, by virtue... Because it's like, we've done Konongo Kaya with the Galams, the war against Galamse. Mm-hmm. Other than that, a few months ago, we would not have been in a town in the eastern region where a town, on the entry to the, in the entry to the town, <laughs> they have written, we are Galamse. Mm-hmm. And this is not 2020. This, yeah, is 20, this is 2023 matter. They had written... Yeah. Like, I, was yeah, born, I was born to in be fact, a Galam. They had yeah. mined so much that they had <laughs> mined so to the main road. So when you are driving, it's not like you have to go to the hinterlands to see that they are doing Galam C. You can actually see. Nathan saw the images. You could actually see People that they are busy doing their thing there. So these things happen and suddenly we are supposed to be surprised by some of these things and how it's not worked out, okay, I, 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 the, the problem Professor Primfor Martin faces with this is, his reputation has taken a, had taken a significant hit by virtue of his association with the IMS and Galamse. There have been several stories about his involvement, alleged mm-hmm. involvement, mm-hmm. his family's alleged involvement, you know, prior to this coming out. So, even he has to deal with the optics of people looking at it like, this is him fighting him back, back yeah. to redeem his image. There is also that perception. Mm. Okay? But for me, what matters that we must not lose sight of is, in the end, who had the most information about illegal mining during that period? Who would have it? Him. True or false? Because the whole committee that was put together, the state apparatus that was put together, the resources that were put together, were all commandeered by him. He would, he's the one person you would have to deal with. You have to deal with whoever. So a lot of power was reposed in him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is what I'm saying. I expect a lot of legal yes, of backlash course. from this. Yes, that's fair. And from our perspective, the civil society, from the media, Ooh, we should awesome. go and knock at the chief of staff's door. Mm-hmm. We should knock at Honorable Jidapo's door. Mm-hmm. Knock at the doors of Mr. Ijinahin because that one, when you knock, you are knocking at the president's door. Mm-hmm. That what exactly happened to this two years down the road? In between time. In, in between. Because post this report, mm-hmm. the war against Galamse is still ongoing. The minister has been touring all kinds of places, saying all kinds of things. Has he known these things? Have these individuals been investigated? Have we checked mm-hmm. on what they've been up to? 
Because at least if the, uh, from Dr. Frimpo, Professor Frimpo-Bati mentions them, there has to be a public record of clearance it, or otherwise. Okay, your name has been mentioned. We looked into it and dismissed mm. it. Even if you dismiss, let us know. Okay, we looked into the mention of it. It's Kai's name and said, oh, no. it's not substantial enough to follow. So let it go. Because unless we are now being told that we should look at that entire 32-page document written in 2021 as gossip fodder. No, I, I'm sorry, but I don't care how far Professor Frimpom Boatin's reputation has sunk mm -hmm. because of this. I will struggle to accept it. That he has written a 32-page yeah, report that something. is gossip fodder. No. That is retribution. No. That is vindictive. No. There might be certain aspects, which is why those aspects are supposed to be cleared up by the institution that asked for the report, mm -hmm. the presidency. Mm -hmm. That is how proper institutions work. Mm -hmm. Okay? But we will overlook it if we are not careful. And then the cycle goes on. The cycle goes on. So here we are, two years after this. <laughs> Has Galamse improved? Because on the report, the last two uh, subtitles of that report indicate the way forward. Has anything changed? The human beings, the persons allegedly who work in state institutions who were listed, do they still work there? Were they asked to step aside to be investigated to see if indeed they are fit for purpose to be there? Somebody was mentioned from the Forestry Commission, for instance, a high-ranking... So I actually mentioned Sir John, busy the late Sir John. Yes, you know. Also mentioned they mentioned a lot of high-ranking officials. Of people people like the president. Do these people still work there? Because these are people who have access to things. I've seen a statement from a young man who's a, you know, all kinds of things. And for me, if we don't fix that, I've always said the Galamsey, the war against Galamsey was lost because of that too. Sky, it's too valuable. <laughs> There's it? too much There's money too much on the money. Money. I'm afraid, did he? Yeah. They but, mentioned, they mentioned, he mentions the police. He mentions the military. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the talk about just how much money is, is, is involved, is involved in this venture. You, you would have to be an angel <laughs> sent from above <laughs> For the to, to, to ignore, nicely you to the, ignore money. the money that is available. And I'm saying there, are, there were two many components to this. You had 10 ministries. Put together. Put together. That's interagency. 10 ministries. That means human resource from all kinds of places whose behavior, whose integrity you cannot judge you can just believe. But in the end, for me, it boils down to that, Sky. Mm -hmm. Just too much money. Too much money. And the people involved have seen it. Like, if this person is making it, I'm making it. Mm -hmm. And they have refused to let it go. I know, right? So it's not going to stop. Mm. And it's sad. We can talk all we want about it, but the war against Galamse is gone. We have, we've talked down. We'll continue doing reports. That's what we are supposed to do. Talk. Raise awareness. Raise attention. But That's the only thing we can do. Some, there have been times where we've been accused of, oh, you have to do more. What else can a media house do? We can only do so much. What else? What else? This, there's a platform we have. So what we can else? Raise this is the only awareness. thing I have. I have a microphone. Samus has given me one. <laughs> Apart from that, there's nothing else that I have. Beyond that way, they can take a placard and go and stand by the people who are saying we are Galamseyers for life. <laughs> they might throw me into the thing. <laughs> into the, the whole day, that day. <laughs> I will not endanger myself like that. But we need... Charlie... The Galamseyers, it, it, it's sad to say it, but Charlie is gone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. The Galamseyers is gone. We've, got, we've reached the point where... We've reached the point of those countries that were dealing in some sort of narcotic where it just became part of regular life. So the, the state looks on and says, okay, every three months we'll chase down the people who sell cocaine <clears throat> or make cocaine and then let it go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it has become. We are not going to stop Galamsey. Too much money. Oh, Charlie, we should stop. <laughs> 0549-986-996 We'll go to some of your comments mm -hmm. 